Did you ever find yourself acting out of character when you're with this other person? Did you ever find yourself screaming, yelling, getting upset more than what you ever did before? Well, you might have been dealing with someone who is toxic, or you might have been dealing with a narcissist, sociopath, psychopath, whoever. And you might have been dealing with something called reactive abuse. If you're new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this platform to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. And the goal is to be able to help people understand what narcissism actually is, what it looks like, how it affects other people, how it destroys lives, how it destroys relationships and interactions at work, and countless different ways how it affects different people. Also to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change in the fact of growing other people, helping other people not just understand what it is, but then how do we grow from it? How do we break free from the trauma bond? How do we work through the rumination phase of always thinking about the narcissist? And how do we build healthy vision and values going forward so that we don't go back with a narcissist or we don't get with a narcissist down the road? A lot of different things to be able to think about, but that's what we try to do. We do that by dropping nuggets of truth on all different platforms. So if you don't follow me on some of the other ones, then go to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or if you're on the podcast, thanks so much for listening. We're on everything underneath Raw Motivation. So check us out there. Thanks so much. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, download the NARC app. We have a lot of people that have been downloading that and getting onto that. It's got courses. It's got a way to track your no contact, a way to ask advice from other survivors and people that are working through the same kind of stuff or that have been through the same stuff that you have. Be at a place for community, a place where we can all interact and try to help people grow, change, heal, develop, and continue to move forward. There's also weekly lives where you can actually come on screen, ask questions, share part of your story, interact with other survivors. And we also have monthly coaching where it's myself and other coaches from around the country that we bring in to be able to help encourage you of how are you going to continue that growth moving forward how are you going to continue to develop yourself not just in the narcissistic type of relationship or getting out of that abusive relationship but moving forward how are you going to develop yourself into your mindset your intentionality your aliveness of how you're going to bring the joy in your life down the road when it feels like it's impossible to see that now and trying to show people a different future, a different idea of what's actually possible down the road. So check that out. It's under Google or Apple Store under NARC. N-A-R-C stands for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. NARC. So check out and download the app today. I wanted to talk to you today about reactive abuse. Reactive abuse. So when you think of the word, think of reaction. Okay, Reaction is uh, the response to someone's action. A lot of times when we look at the word and we look at reactive abuse, it kind of feels like, eh, like it kind of feels like a little bad. Like I don't want to actually approach that or talk about that or, or deal with that or that's not me. But when it comes down to it, everybody always looks at the reaction, right? Like they always see like, whoa, like that person just responded this way or they just reacted like this. But a lot of times we don't take a step back and look at the action that caused the reaction. This is what happens in narcissistic relationships where a person pushes another person to react, okay? It's a reaction to something that has already happened. A lot of times you're going to see this in toxic relationships of the other person poking and prodding and pushing in certain little areas. Sometimes those areas can be huge. Sometimes those areas can be really small. Easiest example would be just with a little kid, not a narcissist. We're just giving an example with a little kid that like holds up their finger and says like, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. That's literally sometimes how annoying it might be for the narcissist coming at you saying, hey, this isn't happening. This isn't happening. And all of a sudden you're like, stop it. You know, it gets upset. And all of a sudden there's a reaction to an action that is annoying. A couple ways that narcissists do this. One is the aspect of dog whistling. And dog whistling is where someone uses phrases and things that are said in private, in a public setting, to produce a reaction. So in that illustration of saying like, hey, I'm not touching you, let's say at home, that makes you really frustrated and really upset because it happens all the time. And it's really distracting, really annoying, okay? And then you go out in public and that person does that in public in front of a bunch of people. How you respond might, be, it might seem over the top compared to everybody else's knowledge that they haven't seen that this has happened for the past two weeks, 24 hours, okay? So that's the idea of dog whistling, where there's something done that's like annoying, that's, that's hurtful, that's harmful inside the relationship or behind closed doors that then gets brought out in public 
And when it's brought out in public, everybody's like, whoa, like, why did you respond like that? Because they haven't seen the constant abuse, the constant push behind closed doors that brought you to that place. Again, going back to the word reaction. So always going off the idea of that the reaction was caused by an action. And people normally don't look at that. They don't normally see this is what's actually going on. You might find yourself in the relationship reacting in ways that you've never thought you would act before. Whether that's, you know, lying or yelling or screaming or throwing stuff or laying hands on someone. Different things you're like, this has never been me in all the relationships that I've been in before and all the family members that I've interacted with. This is not me. What the hell is going on? Well, the thing you have to understand and remember is you have to look at those past relationships and be like, wait a second, that's actually true. This hasn't happened before. Maybe I'm not the crazy person. Maybe I'm getting put in a situation that's making me react that way. A lot of times when we're in the moment and people are reacting and they're doubting themselves and they're thinking like, wait a second, like I must be doing something wrong because of how I'm reacting to this person. They don't tend to look at the past and be like, wait a second, I've never acted this way before. I've never reacted in this type of, you know, aggressive or violent way or whatever it might be. And when they take a look at that, they're like, wait a second, like this actually makes sense. This is not who I am. I'm reacting to the abuse that I'm being put on. Oftentimes you have the narcissist that will focus on one thing in private to make you react. And that's not to go out in public and make you react, but to get an actual reaction out of you. A lot of narcissists thrive off the idea of pushing you to the edge where all of a sudden you snap and you respond with a reaction. You've seen this a lot of times in arguments where there's a giant argument happening or where there's a really frustrating topic that keeps accelerating, 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 and all of a sudden you snap and you start yelling back at the narcissist. Sometimes what you see is immediate calm. And they just kind of sit back. And they get calm because you're the one acting out. And because in their mind, they know they caused that. They caused that reaction. Sometimes at that, that point, that's when you'll see them pull out their phone. They'll start recording you. They'll start noting what you're doing so that they can go and they can prove to other people that you're abusive or that you're mean or that you're rude or whatever it might be. Because everyone focuses the majority of the time on the reaction when they don't understand what's the action that actually caused it. You see, narcissists, they want a reaction. They want to get you to respond in a certain way. If the narcissist can get you to react, then they've controlled that one aspect of your life. If they can get you to respond a certain way to stimuli that they put into your life, then they realize, hey, the ultimate control factor is I just created this. I created a response from another person. And so a narcissist will come into your life and they'll do that every time. And then they'll record and then they'll step back and then they'll act completely calm and make you feel like you're the crazy one. Then when you doubt yourself, They'll forgive you or they'll say like, okay, like we'll just have to work on this later. can't believe you did that. They'll stonewall you like countless different things, but they'll do it to make you feel like you're the crazy one for reacting that way when it was their fault for getting you to the place of that reaction. Now, I want to bring up a quick thing that sometimes people talk about reactive abuse and they're like, wait a second, reactive abuse is not reactive abuse, it's actually defense. And from my opinion, I don't agree. I think there's a difference. Do I think there's times where the lines could be a little bit blurred, especially when we're talking about life-threatening situations? 100%. But again, those I wouldn't call reactive abuse. I would call life-threatening situations. That would be defense. Like you are having self-defense. You're trying to make sure that you are safe emotionally, mentally, physically. In those moments when a person is actually doing reactive abuse, it's not necessarily even about their safety. You know, picture the person who's, you know, not touching you, you know, countless, like just annoying and like kind of pushing all the time to get a reaction. You know, at that moment when you're slapping away the person's hand of being like, get away from me because I'm tired and annoyed of how much you've pushed me to that edge. That's not defense. And that's not self-defense. And that's not defending a boundary or anything like that. All that is, is annoyance at someone's actions against you. When someone's looking from the outside, looking in, and they see you slap that person because they've had their finger close to your face all day long, all they see is a reaction 
the reactive part, and they see what looks to be like abuse. So that's why we name it a lot of times reactive abuse. It's not a lot of people that talk about it, not a lot of people that even see it, but it is a thing that narcissists push people towards to be able to get that response and to be able to get that abuse back because they've created a reaction. The purpose, the sole purpose of reactive abuse is for the narcissist to get a high off of the supply, off of what they created. They created a response. They created something that you had to do in response to their actions. Because I want you to think about this. When it comes down to it, if a narcissist, if, if I can actually make you react, if I can get you to get out of the norm, out of the norm of what you do, how you normally interact, anything like that, if I can make you react, then I can control you. And a lot of times people don't realize that and they play right into the narcissist's hand. But think about that nice and clear. If I can get you to react, then I can control you.